What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Atlas has the single largest standing military in the world, but we answer to no country. Unlike the government, we don't keep secrets of our capabilities. We don't sell policy, we sell power. We are a superpower for hire. Power isn't just about the ability to destroy. Atlas has built infrastructures in places like Korea, Sierra Leone, Nigeria. We do in a few years what it takes governments decades to accomplish. In fact, the truth is, we're often more effective than the governments that hire us. As my son found out the hard way. It's a single source. Has the intel been verified? The intel is good. Hades is meeting with his financial backers in Santorini 24 hours from now. Mr. Irons, the protocols for mounting an assault This on... man is responsible for 50,000 deaths, General. We are going in. An operation on foreign sovereign soil, it would be an act of war without congressional approval. Atlas is an internationally registered private company. We don't need Congress. Gentlemen, are we operational? We're at the ready, sir. You're the trigger. I want your team on the ground in six hours. On whose authority? On my authority! We recently spoke with Jonathan Irons, founder and CEO of Atlas International, the private military corporation responsible for hunting down and killing Hades. Congratulations, you've achieved what no government was able to. Thank you, Wendy, but the real heroes of the day are the men and women of Atlas. I couldn't be prouder of what they accomplished out there this week. There are rumors that the UN will offer you a seat on the Security Council. Can a life in politics be far behind? Well, I like to get things done, so no. But look at what we've done in New Baghdad. Forty years ago, we pulled out of Iraq with that place in ruins and our tail between our legs. And now, it's a testament to what happens when you put efficiency before bureaucracy. The last four years have been huge for you. In the wake of the KVA attacks, Atlas has become the world's biggest corporation. And you now preside over the world's largest standing military. So what's next for Jonathan Irons? Everybody thinks their ideas are right. That's why the people you call terrorists call themselves freedom fighters. The fundamentalists think they're right, the capitalists think they're right, the communists think they're right. And no one will ever convince anyone of anything. And all these honorable men lecturing the world from the floors of congresses and parliaments whose time has long since passed refuse to admit publicly at least ideas don't determine who's right power determines who's right and i have the power so i'm right I am honored to be the first CEO of a private corporation to become a member of the United Nations Security Council. Unfortunately, my appearance today has been clouded by a flurry of speculation that my company is developing a weapon of mass destruction which would be capable of targeting specific ethnic groups. I want to address these allegations head on. Are we developing such a weapon no, we are not. Because we've already developed it. But with all due respect, the United Nations is a relic from a different time when nations were unique in their ability to solve the world's problems. But that just isn't the case anymore. Primarily because you have outsourced the job to me. I have sent people to die in your wars. So I feel uniquely qualified to tell you, your wars don't work. Which is why my priorities have changed from profits to policy. Because politicians don't know how to solve problems, but I do. So let's be clear. I am here to solve the world's problems. And I believe the world's problems begin with you. The 
democracy? Democracy. Democracy isn't what these people need. Hell, it's not even what they want. America's been running around the globe trying to install democracies in nation after nation for a century, and it hasn't worked one time. Now, why do you think that is? Because these countries don't have the most basic building blocks necessary to support a democracy. Little things like, we ought to be tolerant of those who disagree with us, or we ought to be tolerant of those who worship a different god than us, or that a journalist ought to be able to disagree with a fucking president. And you think you can walk into this country based on fundamentalist religious principles, drop a couple of bombs, topple a dictator, and start a democracy? <sighs> Give me a break. People don't want freedom. They want rules, boundaries, protections from invaders and from themselves. People need a leader who can both provide the constraints and the support to keep chaos at bay. And you give them that, and they'll follow. And that's where I come in. I wanted to meet the man whose mission it was to kill me. Our mission was to stop you. <clears throat> but if that meant killing you, I don't think anybody'd be too troubled. Failure is not something we tolerate here at Atlas, so I'm disturbed that three of my best contractors have failed so miserably. But that's the way it has to be. The wheat from the chaff, the strong from the weak, the ancient Spartans knew the true meaning of warfare. But that truth has been lost to us for two millennia. What of your son, Will? What was he? Wheat or chaff? Will was the victim of the misguided policies of the United States government. Will died fighting for what he believed in. Of course, the tragedy is dying for what you believe in doesn't make it true. Yeah.